It may come as no surprise that in the land of leprechauns, elves, and fairies, there is also a place for goddess worship. Clonagall Castle in Ireland, built in 1625 on a site where ancient druids used to gather. Since 1780, it's been the ancestral home of the Durdin Robertson family. Lawrence, the 21st Baron of Strathlock, became so deeply interested in the occult that in 1976, he and his sister, Lady Olivia, founded the Fellowship of Isis. The Fellowship of Isis is a multi-religious, multi-racial, multicultural society. That's why we have Catholic priests, nuns, Hindus, witches, spiritualists, walking round on a Sunday and drinking well water in our temple and lighting candles because we've no uh, specific dogma that divides people. We find one point in common with all religions, the feminine, which we feel needs emphasizing now really to save our planet from world destruction with our arms race and pollution. Baron Robertson was once an Anglican minister until one day in 1966. Uh, I had, well, you could just call it a revelation or the insight that the feminine aspect of deity was all important, or in other words, that God was feminine or female. And from then on, um, a great many things changed, particularly the uh, theology. The Fellowship of Isis dedicates itself to worshipping the goddess in all religions, wherever she is found. There are now over 5,000 members in 53 countries. Some of them travel to Clonagall Castle for ordination. We hope to achieve harmony among all peoples and all animals, trees and plants, without these terrible divisions, doctrinal and political or anyway, but to achieve harmony with spirits. Isn't it silly that you're loved by your family on a Monday when you're so-called alive? When you enter spirit world on Wednesday and pop in to see people, they scream and call you a ghost. The procession of the candidates proceed right down into the ancient part of the castle till they reach the old dungeon. I think it's quite exciting, it, it's dramatic. Candidates for ordination, are you willing to face the ordeal of entering the dungeon and seeing the dark earth mother of all beings, the Morrigan? I do. I dare. You may enter. I am Morrigan, mother of the dark earth and all the creatures therein. Do you fear me? No, I accept thee with love. No, I honor thee with wisdom. I am Ishtar, goddess of the stars. Take my blessing. The temple is a halfway house between the other world and this. When I get people into group meditation at our eight yearly festivals, I say, let us now shut our eyes and find ourselves in Tiananmen. Well, the temple is halfway to spirit world. I must tell you a funny story. You know the Tigers in Ireland, the traveling people? Well, they like coming here, you know. One of them took the earrings off one of our statues and put it down solemnly in front of the lady, you know. And the lady came up to me and says, Hey, Mum, she says, where's the magic carpet? I said, magic carpet? She said, oh, you have a magic carpet, a great carpet here. So the people are all sitting and they go off on a grand journey. I didn't know what she meant. Then I remember that at our ceremonies, we say, here is a carpet, please sit in it, and we will go to ancient Egypt or wherever. 
And people come back and they give reports of astral experiences. And this reached the Dublin tinkers, that that's what we did. It's a jolly good description. Maybe that's what the Moors meant by their magic carpets. May the priestesses invoke deity. I invoke the goddess Isis and the goddess Cyrus. May wisdom and joy prevail. I invoke the goddess Anya and the god Luch. May plenty be reigned upon the land of Ireland. We had one very interesting long distance ordination from Atlanta, Georgia. And we had the telephone amplified. But typical in our family, my nephew had forgotten to pay the bill. So we got cut off the day before. There was frantic shenanigans trying. They wouldn't put it on until we knew the exact amount that was owed. And it just came on about half an hour beforehand. And we had a wonderful ceremony. We in full robes and they in Georgia. And we heard every word they said quite clearly. A lovely lady, Lady Morgan Le Fay. May the candidates step forward. Do you wish to be ordained as priestesses of the goddess? I do. I do. Which goddess do you choose to follow? I choose the goddess Selene. I choose the goddess Isis. With this holy oil, I ordain you both priestesses. With these crowns, I dignify thy head. The head center gives the halo. With this stole, the silver of the moon goddess Selene, whom you follow, I hallow thy heart. And this pure white of Isis brings you joy. With this magical wand, I strengthen thy will for good. With this fine staff, I strengthen thy magical powers. In the name of the goddess Selene and of the goddess Isis, I declare you both priestesses of the Fellowship of Isis. In the name of the priesthood of the great goddesses of the Pantheons, I accept these ordinations. Dear daughters of the goddess, reflect your mother's glory and give forth your first blessing. As priestess of Selene, I call down blessings on all present here. As priestess of Isis, I bless all here with health and peace. Practitioners of the occult often look back to early tribal religions for their inspiration. Here they find the shaman. Javanese shamans possessed by the spirit of a horse. Mystics capable of magical journeys, attaining an altered state of consciousness. Enveloped in a trance-like state. Immune to pain. Insensitive to hurt. Unscathed even by rolling in broken glass. Shamans undertake a journey of the spirit, but should these occult experiences remain exclusive to the tribes? The veil is being lifted off of many of the traditions that have kept the teachings a secret. And I think that the lineage holders, both from uh, the, of the Aboriginal peoples and of Old High Culture, these lineage holders recognize the simple fact that it is no longer appropriate to have secret teachings. That it's extremely important to make teachings available to all people. 